Hey guys, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics. Today I'm in Worcester, Massachusetts. I'm actually working today. I have half an hour for lunch, so I decided to stop by That's Entertainment. Let's see what kind of comic book deals I can find in half an hour. So you can see this door is absolutely massive. Luckily all the comic books are alphabetized and I walked in towards the end of the alphabet so I started with the S's. You see here the Superboy comic uh, with their absolutely ridiculous cover. Uh, it got a good laugh out of me but it's definitely not something I'm interested in adding to my collection. And just a reminder, all the books here are pretty cheap but they're not boarded. So they tend to get beat up quite a bit. They have lots of spine ticks. But every once in a while you'll see a photocopy like there where there's a nicer book behind the counter. You just bring that up front to get the nicer book. Then I'm looking at Superman. He's not really uh, my thing, but there are some pretty nice silver and bronze age Supermans you can find here. Pretty cool covers, always worth looking at. And here I am looking at the Spectre. The Spectre is my absolute favorite DC character right now. Um, I'm going really hard into Spectre, so I've been looking at books whenever I can. I can't not look for them. Just a very cool character. Then I decided to change gears and I went over to the Captain America section because I'm looking specifically for number 360 and there it is. Number 360 is the first appearance of Crossbones in full, although he has several cameo appearances that I already own. You see here they're $15 each, there were like four of them. Uh, I think I can get them cheaper than $15 so I decided to pass. Here I am looking at my Daredevil books. I had a Daredevil video recently. I love Daredevil, specifically Frank Miller Daredevil. So here I am going through the Miller run of books. Most of these I already have. However, I like looking at them if I can find one like higher grade. This book here I do already have, but the reason I'm pulling it out is that this book scared me as a kid. I remember this book and I just couldn't believe how violent it was, what it looked like Punisher was doing to Daredevil. And this one, number 189, one of my favorite Frank Miller covers. Um, again, I already own this book. I always like to look to see if there's a higher grade one. These are all pretty good uh, for the price, five, six, seven dollars but again, I already own it. Here I am, still moving alphabetically, right over to Deadpool. I'm looking for a specific book, and there it is. It's Deadpool number one, The Circle Chase. This is a book that was pretty big in the 90s, and it was Deadpool's first solo series. It's not a book that I own, um, and it's one that you know, I'm very familiar with from the 90s, but not being a huge Deadpool fan, wasn't interested in picking it up as a kid. But hey, if I can find it for the right price, I wouldn't mind adding it to my collection now. Then I jump next door to the Defenders. I love the Defenders. They're one of my favorite Marvel teams. And then I find a book that I do not have. This is the Defenders number 28. It's the first appearance of Starhawk, a cool character affiliated with the Guardians of the Galaxy. And then I move next door to Fantastic Four. There's a very small section of Silver Age Fantastic Four. As you can imagine, being in these back issue bins without boards, these aren't big keys, guys. You're not going to find first appearance of Black Panther or Silver Surfer in here. But still, they're fairly well priced. And, you know, if you're trying to fill in those early Fantastic Four runs, uh, you can do a lot worse, you know, for the price of these. You see there's a couple issues here of them fighting Sam in. Just great, great Jack Kirby covers um, and always fun to look at them. Still plowing along alphabetically, I make it to Ghost Rider. I'm specifically looking for two books from volume two, number 28 and number 31. It's the first appearance of the Midnight Suns, and there they are. So these books used to come in a poly bag, and you can often find them bagged at a price of like 15 to 25 dollars. In this case here, you see they're outside the poly bag, but that's okay, because those poly bags usually leave a stripe down the middle, and these were only five dollars each, which I think is an absolute steal for each of these books. Pretty happy to pick them up. So I move right next door to the Green Lantern books. I've been really into Green Lantern as well lately, guys, especially old bronze and Silver Age Green Lantern. I specifically love the Silver Age trade dress, that one there, especially when it has that cool checkerboard pattern at the top. I absolutely love these. They don't need to be keys. I just think they have a great aesthetic, and I always want to add them to my collection. But what I really want to find is some of those coveted Neil Adams covers. Luckily, they actually have a Neil Adams Green Lantern Green Arrow section. Unfortunately, there were only two books in there and neither of them were drawn by Neil Adams. I think they're both Gil Kane, Murphy Anderson books. Uh, and this one here was not only in bad shape, but had some very, very questionable staple placement. So after only really going through letters C through G, I was pretty much out of time, guys. But on my way out, I noticed these dollar bins, which I've never seen in all my times I've been there before. As you can see, there's nothing really good in there, 
but I did find this X Force number eight, first appearance of Domino. Uh, it was in really high grade. I think for a dollar, it's absolutely a book worth picking up. All right, that's a hard store to drag yourself out of after half an hour. Uh, what a tease. Well, anyways, I got some pretty cool comic books in the limited time I was there. Can't wait to go home and show you guys what I got. So there you go, guys. That was That's Entertainment in Worcester, Massachusetts. They actually have two locations in Central Mass. I'll make sure to put a link down in the description if you want to check them out for yourself. And just like my visit there, this will be a quick video because I didn't get many books and you saw and heard me speak about several of them on the footage. However, they're really cool and I have some really fun fact toys to go along with them. Before I show you what they are, if you like this sort of stuff, go down, hit that like button, leave me a comment, feel free to subscribe, follow me on Instagram under Lunch Money Comics IG. Let me show you what I got. So let's start with our cheapest book and we'll work our way up. Starting, of course, with our dollar bin find, X-Force number eight from 1992, cover art by Rob Liefeld. And this is the first appearance of the real Domino. And it also has Cable's backstory in it. Now, I talked about this book very recently on my channel because I picked it up at another flea market for $5. I was happy to get it for five then. I'm really happy to get this for a dollar now. The reason why I want to talk about it, though, is that when I talked about this book in that previous video, one of my very astute viewers mentioned down in the comments that although Rob Liefeld did the art on the cover, the inside was done by a guest penciler. And the name of that penciler was Mike Mignola of Hellboy fame. So that's pretty cool. Adds a little level of pedigree on top of the sort of key significance to this book. And again, I'm very happy to pick up a first appearance of a pretty cool character for $1. X-Force number eight. Okay, so these next two are a package deal. You saw them in the footage and heard me speak about them. They are Ghost Rider Volume 2, number 28, and number 31. So the significance here is that this is the first appearance of the team, The Midnight Suns. It was part of a six-part series from 1992 where the team, The Midnight Suns, are fighting the evil demon queen, Lilith. Now, number 28 is actually the first cameo appearance of the team and Lilith. I say cameo because they appear like in a vision. They're not actually there. Lilith shows up in uh, Spears of Vengeance number one, which is the second part of this Rise of the Midnight Suns six-part story. So they sort of this story sort of crossed multiple platforms. And then the team finally appears in full in this title here, number 31. Now, the team is usually made up of a whole bunch of like anti-heroes that are based in like magic or monsters or the occult. So you always have one or two Ghost Riders, Morbius, Blade, the Darkhold Redeemers, characters like that. And of course, very recently, there was a video game featuring an iteration of this team, or at least you can make your own iteration of the Midnight Suns team. I think they're a really cool team. I think it's, uh, for those of you who like Spec, I think it's a team that could probably come to the big screen um, if you're talking, you know, adding Blade um, or like Black Knight and eventually a Ghost Rider or two. I think they're a really cool team and I'm always happy to pick these books up. Like I mentioned in the footage, they usually come in a poly bag with a poster. These are missing those poly bags. That's okay. I have them poly bags somewhere else, but these are in really high grade and I got them for five bucks each. Guys, I usually see these for like 15 to $25. So five bucks each, very happy to pick up the first appearances of the Midnight Suns. Pretty cool books right there. Okay, so this next book you definitely saw in the footage. This is Deadpool the Circle Chase number one from 1993. And this is the first issue of the first limited series of Deadpool. Like I said, I'm not a huge Deadpool fan, but I do like that he's associated with the mutant teams. And I, like I also said, you know, I didn't have to have this book, but if I found it in good condition at the right price, I'd pick it up. This was 10 bucks, it's in pretty good shape. Happy to add it to my collection. But I did have an ulterior motive to picking this book up. So I recently did an interview with some awesome guys on the Absolute Game of Nerds podcast. Uh, they're on YouTube as well as iTunes. Uh, and if you haven't checked them out, I'll definitely link to them somewhere like right here. You should definitely go check out that interview, guys. Basically, it was three like-minded guys who like comic books. We're all roughly the same age. And we went off for like an hour and a half on like just a stream of consciousness, talk about everything on comic books uh, under the sun. We had an absolute fantastic time. And one of the really cool things is because we're all roughly the same age, we found we had something very cool in common. And it's that we all loved the Marvel trading cards from the early 1990s. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, uh, there were several series in the early 90s stood depicting uh, different Marvel characters. Um, there was like four or five series of these and you also had like the Marvel Masterpieces, the X-Men cards. There were lots of them. Well, these were one of my most prized possessions when I was a kid. And it got me into Marvel Comics, but it also influenced how I collect. Because way back then, before I knew what a key was, I started trying to collect the first appearances of these characters. See, the backs of these cards actually have like their stats, which is really cool to a kid, like what their strength and their speed is, agility. But it also says when their first appearance. 
So I would go to my local comic book store trying to look up some of these characters. And of course, you know, <laughs> the big golden age characters I wouldn't find in dollar bins or the silver age characters. But the 90s characters I could often find. And uh, over the years, I've sort of chipped away at like getting these when I can. That's how I know a lot of these obscure characters because I had the trading cards. Well, it just so happened to be that one of the cards in this album, I think in series four, um, was a character I wasn't familiar with. But his first appearance was... Deadpool, Circle Chase number one, the character I'm talking about is Slayback. So Slayback evidently is the bad guy in this book, or one of the bad guys, and in fact his card um, in the series four, the like montage, collage kind of things, and his creepy arm is like reaching over to the Deadpool card. So very cool. So uh, not only do these influence, you know, me getting into Marvel Comics, but they influence the way I collect them even till this day. So that's actually why I had to pick up this book. I still pick up first appearances of as many of these characters as I can. And that segues perfectly into our final book. Let's get out of the crummy 90s and back into the 70s when comic books were comic books. Here we have The Defenders number 28 from 1975. And this is the first full appearance of Stakar of the House of Ogord, a.k.a. Starhawk. Um, I love the Defenders. They're really cool. I love every character in them. So I'm always looking at Defenders books. So it's sort of a bonus to come across the first appearance of Stakar. He's usually a character associated with the Guardians of the Galaxy. He's got a great look to him. I mean, he just screams 1970s space. And uh, I think the most interesting thing is that he is actually played by none other than Sylvester Stallone in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And he will be reprising his role in Volume 3. He doesn't look anything like this, but uh, this hints of this costume sort of on Stallone's costume in the movie. So very cool comic book, guys. I'm happy to pick it up. It was $15 and it's not in the best condition, but again, uh, for a nice Bronze Age book, first appearance, I'm happy to get it. And I said it was a good segue because you guessed it, volume three of the Marvel trading cards, there is a Starhawk card. So I had to add one more first appearance of these cards, uh, check it off my list and add it to my collection. So there you go, guys. First full appearance of Stakar, a.k.a. Starhawk. Very cool comic book. Very happy to pick this one up. So there you go, guys. Uh, I kind of like limiting myself to half an hour because it really caused me to only focus on a couple of titles. And although some of these books I was actively looking for, you know, this one here was a complete surprise and I was really happy I stumbled across it. Um, I definitely didn't break the bank. I spent a grand total of $36, which is sort of uh, more in the vein of lunch money comics. Uh, but I like all my pickups. Let me know down in the comments which one of these you like the best. I think most of you are going to say this one. But hey, there might be some big 90s fans out there that he these hold a very special place in your heart. Um, that's it, guys. In the meantime, I hope you keep finding comic books in strange and unusual places. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.